Hello, and welcome to our presentation about the mathematics of Sudoku. My name is Isaac, this is Ollie, Gabriel, Sam, and Max. Uh, and I'm going to start with the history of Sudoku. Sudoku originated in the form of Latin squares. Uh, it's a three by three grid where the basic rule for it was the sum of the diagonals should be equal to the sum of the rows and columns. Fifty years later, a man named Howard Garns developed the idea, and it's, well, he thought of it as nine, nine regions of three by three grids. And as well as requiring the rows and columns to be permutations, also uh, also said that there would be one unique way of solving each Sudoku. Uh, the idea caught on in Japan, and they, they called it Suji Wa Doshi Ni uh, which was literally translated to the digits are limited to one occurrence, and was thankfully shortened to Sudoku. So, um, you all know the regular 9 by 9 Sudoku grids which is an example of the square number Sudoku grids. So this can come in 4x4, 16 by 16 or the 9x9 by as you can see there. However, you can also get even number Sudoku grids, like the 8x8, which is which are all arranged in this kind of rectangular format, like you have a 4x4 or 6x6. But you can also get the rare odd Sudoku grids, like the 5x5 we've managed to find, which have a more irregular layout, unlike the other ones. There are multiple methods of solving a Sudoku. Uh, the main one that you'll probably use is process of elimination. This is going through it systematically and checking each grid and seeing what possibilities are going, um, possibilities of a number going in each slot. And then you can, through this, on the easy Sudoku's, you can solve it within a relative amount of time. Then you have the X-wing method. And with this method, what it does is you find a point, a square, in essence, with the blues, where the number contains in the same section. And from there, you can process of elimination again, put seven in, put seven in one of them, so say the top left-hand side, yeah, put seven there, and then in the bottom right-hand side, put seven there, and then the other two don't have to be seven, they can be nine and six. Uh, then there's a coding, we decided to code a Sudoku, and this Sudoku does it through a process of elimination as well. So it goes through it systematically, checking every single square from the inputs you've placed, um, and seeing what number can go in there, and then running through multiple times until it creates a complete Sudoku. So with a completely empty Sudoku, if you, wanted, if you filled in the clues completely randomly, to be 100% sure that there was only one solution, you'd need 78 clues. Uh, by this, I mean that if you have four, four blank squares, each arranged so that they are each, they have a row, a column, and a three by three square in common with one other, um, one of the other blank squares, as well as each square being filled with one of two numbers, then there will be two solutions. For example, with this one, there is a, a one and a two missing from these, uh, these rows, a one and a two missing from these columns, and a one and a two missing from these three by three squares, which means you have to arrange it like this or like this. Now, it doesn't matter which way round you arrange it, because in both scenarios, there'll be a one and a two in each row, column, and three by three square. Now, we have this thing where we can um, essentially swap around the rows or the columns in a grid, like so. So if we do this, we get a new grid that is completely legitimate, there are no, no repeat the numbers at all, and it is very similar to the grid we had originally. Um, this means that it shares many of the same mathematical properties and would be solved in a very similar way. Now we say that these two grids are part of the same family. And a Sudoku family is um, every single possibility of shifting all the rows or all the columns to still give valid grids. Uh, there are just under 5.5 billion Sudoku families in existence. And we can use these similar properties to solve problems such as what is the least number of clues required for a unique solution. So 17 is the magic number. People wanted to know what the minimum amount of clues were from a 9x9 grid. Previously, they knew that 17 did produce unique solutions, but they weren't sure whether 16 produced any unique solutions. So Gary McGuire led a team to research this. 
When we think of a mathematical proof, we generally think of a long string of algebra that gives a useful solution for a general case scenario. What Gary McGuire did was a little less elegant. They created a computer program that brute forced the problem by checking through every single grid for any possible 16 clue scenario. Now, there are around 6.7 by 10 to the 21 grids in existence. That's a lot. And the computer at the time would have taken around 300,000 years, and, well, nobody has that much patience. So in order to break down the problem, they used the similar properties of Sudoku families. They only had to check through one grid from each family, and as I said earlier, this meant there were only five, just under 5.5 billion grids to check. So after reducing it down by this much, it took just under a year. Um, still a long time, but much shorter than it was before. They started at the beginning of 2011 and finished in December. And when they finished, they had definitively proven there is no possible Sudoku grid, 9 by 9 that has only 16 clues. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We would like to thank our mentors, Andrew and George. Uh, and we hope you enjoyed. But before we finish, we're not quite done. Like we said before, we did create this Sudoku solver. So right now, Gabriel's going to bring it up on the screen so we can solve the Sudoku for you live. <laughs> Aha! Okay, so say we want to enter in uh, two clues. Uh, so uh, this will not have a unique solution. So if we set a clues row being eight and the column being seven, and uh, give me a random number. Nine. Nine? Okay. Okay, and then uh, the next row we will say be three. And four, and give me a random number. Six. Six. And you press enter, and it's solved.